All right. Um, well, first of all, we want to thank you on behalf of the Nigan Placa, the indigenous people of this whole continent, yeah. for what you've added to, to our understanding of ourselves. Let's see, uh, your work, the work of uh, Jacques Soustel, Nigel Davies, oh, who's yeah, my favorite. Those are all friends of mine. I, I, I figured you knew them. Yeah. And then uh, uh, David Stannard, who's been one, yeah. uh, also one of the ones who helped inspire us in, in yeah. what we're doing. Uh, with all of these historians and archaeologists, um, um, you know, that comes the issue of, uh, for us of, of the accomplishments of our ancestors. And, and it's also finding out about the genocide that took place. Yeah. In, in context of all of this... Um, I'd add one more thing. Yes. And that is uh, people who are not indigenous to the, to the New World mm -hmm. trying to take away your heritage from you by claiming, you know, that these are Vikings or these came from well, Africa. Yeah, well, that's where we met. You and yeah. that we met all that problem before. Or were, you know, UFOs and the Mormons no, and, uh, exactly. and all, all of that. Uh, I had this conversation with somebody and I said, well, normally I just, I don't even want to get into the discussion. It's a, it's a, it's a fruitless discussion. They're it's not fruitless. fruitless. You can't, you can't, they've got their minds made up. And yeah, that's it. and you can't, they don't want to be uh, confused with facts. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I used to make anybody who was a student, I made them learn or at least attempt to learn an indigenous language. So they didn't always have to do everything for Spanish or English, you know, the conquering people. Do it through the, the, the minds of, of the native people in their own language. And uh, that was important. I think you, you have to spend at least a semester or maybe two semesters going to some place as a teacher, Maya, or South Africa, or Nahuatl. And uh, those people got a lot out of it. They really did. They saw, you have to deal with the, the native documents. Yeah, that, that's that's one of the issues, but it's, it's, it's kind of a two-edged sword, though. It's kind of like a, like one of the Zapotec speakers told me, yeah, we speak Zapotec, we live in a full blood community, but we're saying all the same stupid things, the same ignorant things that well, they people don't say in feedback. Spanish. They don't get feedback yeah. from, the, the, you know, from the people who, who, who can read, let's say, by it or study Zapotec, know well, all about Zapotec yeah. archaeology. Yes. And, well, that's what I'm, I'm talking specifically about Zapotec in the sense that they have a beautiful history, but yeah. they know nothing of it. I know. Well, it's not taught in the schools in Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it is not. It's not, you know, in a lot of places, so teach this kind of stuff. That's the thing to emphasize, okay. is, is to teach people well, well, their own culture so yeah. they can participate. Okay. And it started with the Maya now. Okay. They have high regular sessions. Then you yeah, which, which we saw, we saw that beautiful video. Yeah, they can start video. reading their own stuff. Yeah. Yeah, That's wonderful. Yeah, because yeah, uh, we were at, a, at another conference uh, at Cal State LA about a month ago. And uh, we had uh, uh, Eduardo Matos uh, Montezuma, oh, yeah. who, who was there. And uh, I asked him from the audience, uh, when will we be removing the Mexico City colonial buildings to reveal Tenochtitlan. That's true. Uh, and his response was never. Yeah. Th those are the jewels of Mexican culture. Yeah. Well, they had that problem, which he was involved with, mm -hmm. with the Central Mayor. Uh, they removed all of the colonial buildings mm -hmm. that were on top of the Temple Mayor. Mm -hmm. Oh, there was a huge uproar, as you can yeah. imagine, about yeah. that. He was right in the middle of that. Yeah. But it's very symbolic of the problems with Mexico and yeah. actually the... the uh, well, well, we'll stick with Mexico in that it's, until we can remove the symbol of colonialism, yeah. how are we ever going to get to the to be able to reconstruct ourselves if we have these obstacles 
burying us. Well, <laughs> there are ways to, to, to reveal what's mm -hmm. underneath, mm -hmm. uh, but it's very expensive. Uh, you know, yeah. More well, liberation, liberation, liberation for people is a very expensive uh, yeah. situation. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, of, of the countries of Latin America with large indigenous populations, uh, like Mexico, Guatemala, Peru, uh, Ecuador, uh, the, the, uh, the Mexicans were going a long way uh, in the past 50, 100, or even 100 years into bringing the knowledge of the Aztecs, let's say, whoever it was, to school children, older people, and whatnot. If you go into the, uh, the Museum of Anthropology in Mexico, and you see these things, and they're, they're, they're seeing the real stuff. This is not true in other countries in Latin America. They know nothing about their past. They're not taken into it. The teachers know nothing, even oh, less than anybody. They know less than the children. But yeah. even the Museo de Antropología, it's going, well, look at what the Indians did. Yeah, we, we speak like we're Europeans, and know, we speak about ourselves. Well, that's so, so, it, it, so it, it's not necessarily a solution even even no. when, when when the materials are brought up. Yeah. Right now, here we are, we're at a conference. Yeah. Uh, we came at another one. Our people have no interest in this. I know. And uh, well, they want to look at television. <laughs> be, because That's they're the because they're very colonized and they've been taught to hate the Indian. I know that. Well, you know, there's a, there's a, uh, in Mexico, there's the Instituto Mexicanismo, which was founded in the period by Cardenas in the early 1930s. And the program of that is specifically to obliterate native culture, to, to, you know, to bring these people up to be Mexicanos. Right. By Mexicano, assimilation, genocide. Assimilation. That's exactly what yeah. it is. Yeah. And, uh, Which is destruction. They won't admit it, but that's what it what it was. But it sounds good. It sure <laughs> sounds good. You're trying to help these people yeah. by turning yeah. them into little Spaniards. Yeah. You know? And and that's part of the problem. Yeah. Uh, well, do you see any solution in that? Because the thing is, what we're seeing is like presenting this question to uh, uh, Moctezuma, and yeah. with him, it's kind of like it's a, you know. Uh, segregation now, segregation forever. <laughs> well, he's part of the establishment. No, he is. He's he a is. Big shot in well, 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 the thing is, the Criollo still controls Mexico. Oh, of course they do. And, you know, you can see that on Spanish language television. Listen, you can see it uh, how it's uh, okay. I, I was invited by a, a, quite a lot of American archaeologists and anthropologists mm -hmm. to the big, under Lopez Mateo, to the opening of all these new museums, mm -hmm. and which were spectacular. Mm -hmm. And we were invited to the National Palace for the the, the, the Dia you know, Del Grito. <laughs> uh, here we were as anthropologists in the middle of the people who run Mexico, all the big shops in Mexico. You hardly ever saw an indigenous man. They were as white as the driven snow. <laughs> George, Bush, George Bush could have been there. This is, I said, we thought there was a revolution here at one point. Yeah. It was, a, it was yeah. an eye opener. Yeah. It, it so, so that was that's the reality of yeah. Mexico. Yeah, and of all the countries of Latin America. It became very graphic for you in, in, in yeah, that situation. It was right there. Yeah. Who runs Mexico? Not the indigenous people, that's for sure. Yeah, because when, when we talk about, okay, taking back uh, the, the languages, not just the Nahuatl yeah. language, but yeah. Nahuatl is uh, lengua franca, you can speak a uh, yeah. beautiful language. Yeah. 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 And, and because uh, in a way, when we speak Mexican Spanish, we have a lot of Nahuatl. I know that. And, and the Mayans have a, a scattering of Nahuatl and the Zapotecs, yeah. etc. But uh, as far as uh, getting to the knowledge and appreciating the genius of these civilizations, it, it's something I don't hear from the professors at the MNAM. Yeah. I don't hear it. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the educational yeah. system. It's completely for assimilation. It, yeah. That's the official. And, and assimilation, assimilation is, again, you go by the, the definition of genocide, where you basically take the power away from people. It's not about, because people get confused about genocide just being about executing people. And, uh, yeah. uh, concentration camps and all, yeah. but it, it, when you destroy people's culture and their, their sense there's, of there's identity. There's a term for this, ethnocide. Ethnocide. Uh, ethnocide. Yeah. I mean, that gets away with it from the blood and gore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's it's ethnocide. And it's, yeah. it's been in every Latin American country. 
And in this country, too, for a long time, uh, it was ethnic pride. Uh, taking the people away from their own land is really the basis of that. Well, Guatemala, for instance, uh, had a, back in the 19th century, they had a, uh, a kind of a revolution where, where the liberals came in. The liberals were all white. Every single one of them. And the first thing they did was to alienate the Indians, the Mayas of the world. They got rid of all the people in the That was what was called the La Reforma. But the reform is making sure that the Indians the Mayas aren't going to own land anymore. Well, that's kind of like when we look at the future and we say, well, with communism we lose, <laughs> with capitalism no, no, we lose. They're no better. They're no, mean, they're no better. Because you, you know, can end up with Stalin like, committed yeah, ethnocide yeah, on yeah, a massive yeah. scale. Yeah. And, and the, but, but if we look at the, what's going on where the demographics are going in the next 50, 100, 150 years down the road, where we become a majority, uh, yeah. and, and we can work on reconstructing ourselves, obviously yeah. making enough for the last 500 years, you know, because people think, oh, well, you guys want to go back to whatever is a... What uh, hinges upon what happens to the education system? I enjoyed the book. It was really, really well written. At the beginning, they, were, they presented the whole issue of theology and said, well, it's actually monotheistic, just with the different manifestations of the one creator. And well, I'll tell you, it's a very good book. I've got to admit, even though he's actually not indigenous at all, it's Miguel Leo Portilla. I'm familiar with And he, he's written a lot on that. Uh, he is a believing Catholic, I know that. But he's looking for the one God in, uh, in, in all of the indigenous stuff. And he's written a very good book. His book, Aztec Torture. Yeah. In fact, I use it as a textbook. Yeah. So I know the guy. Yeah, the, well, the, the problem we have with him, yeah, yeah. yeah. Aztec Bob and right. Culture is a very good book. But when he writes about contemporary, oh, that's something else. That's, that's <laughs> we have we have very yeah. big problems. That's with another story. It. And uh, but but what's your take in, in terms of? Uh, well, I guess that's why I brought up the Markmans because um, yeah. they were they present that and they say okay, well they're just different manifestations of the same creator. Um, and uh, I, I use the example as kind of like here's me and here's my hand. It has a name. It has an action. But you know it's a attached to the same, yeah. you know, so I can punch your hands, I didn't yeah. do that, you right. know it's my hand, right? right. And so I, I try to use that as, a, as an example, yeah. and um, with the Markmans, they were, they were clear, okay, they were monotheistic, but then the next chapter, they went back to gods. Yeah, yeah. And, and I try to find logic in how they could do that. The thing is that uh, you have to start thinking like a Greek. <laughs> you know, we, we, you know, for European culture, say either A or B is true. One is, if one is true, the other is not true, and vice versa. But that's not the way, that's not the way they can both be true, or they can both be false. I mean, just because one is true doesn't mean the other is not true. Because there, to, sometimes there's layers. There's layers. And layers and you know, what's different What's the story about? You know, what are they trying to do? What are they trying to say? Uh, and you have to look at that all the time to separate their things out. Well, it's like the popol vuh. Okay, you can look at it and, oh, it's about these gods and uh, the, the corn god and all that. Or is it just... An agricultural story. Well, I think it is actually. Nobody's mentioned that. Yeah, I think it's an agricultural story. It's an agricultural and story, and, and that's what the bottom line is. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like when people I run across people and say, "Oh yeah, I read the book," and I said, "And you understood it?" And, and they'll always say, "Yes." Yeah. They say, "You know what? I've reread it, and I've reread it, and I'm still working on. I'm making notes and all that stuff." And, yeah, and the, it, it seems like it was more like for the Mayan priests to use and to explain the way, whether it's in, 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 in Hindu talking about scripture or, yeah. or a Muslim or a Christian and they're using and they have ways of emphasizing. I think it was in many, many ways, yeah. but essentially the bottom line of this is it's about the, the, the planting and the growth of maize, of corn. That's what the, the whole 
I think all of my religion is really basically about and, and, and maize is is about again planting it, uh, fear of drought, waiting uh, for the rain, waiting for the rain, all, the, all uh, everything around it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but then if you simplify it like that, then you lose the other the other sub messages. I know that. I know that. Yeah. But you can look at it on different levels. I mean, that's what I mean. Uh, when I used to run the seminars on all of this kind of stuff, ancient Mexican thought, uh, I had great students. I had incredible students. Guys like Carl Calvin that they quoted yeah. here. I would, I would just listen to them what they had to say, but uh, essentially. That's what it was about. Um, uh, we you could take that on any level and get down to the nitty gritty, the individual gods and their actions. But basically, the whole thing is related. I think we're going to have to. Yeah, no, no, no. no, no I just want to thank you very much. Uh, I enjoyed it. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be following you.